Hey everyone, I'm Airwing Marine, and welcome back to the channel in my next Escape from Tarkov video. We're back at it. We're going to be doing the Hideout Crafting Profit series again. This will be a Friday thing going forward. We'll hit her up and show you guys what to make in your hideout. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we dive in here too deep real quick, I want to cover a couple of quick points. One, I, the spreadsheet is available for your guys to use. It's a Google Docs sheet. The link's down in the uh, description, and I'll throw it in the comments so you guys can get into it. I only update it on these videos. It takes a lot of time and work to update it, so I can't do it every day. But you guys can uh, download the copy of the sheet from the Google Docs and change items as you want fit. I have a video for that, uh, kind of explaining how that spreadsheet works. Uh, the link will be somewhere up top that you can click on uh, to watch that video real quick. Uh, just talks through the spreadsheet and how to uh, modify it for your own use. On top of that, these prices that I use in here are averages. You can min-max and get way better than the stuff I have in here. This is a general guide. This is for people that don't have the time to really dive in and look at components or buy up a bunch of stuff. I just want to make a video for people that are tied up with other things other than Tarkov. So they can come in, they don't have to guess, they know they can click and craft this item and make money and not second guess it. That's kind of the whole point of this. But if you guys have better ideas or you notice stuff or you think I messed something up, by all means, throw it in the comments. Some of the better ones, I pin them so people can see them, especially if you've got a clever way to make a bunch of money on a craft. So enough of that, let's jump right into the med station. Salewa's got absolutely bamboozled. And I don't know how how else to put it. Uh, there's You can't make money off of them now. These were a great level one craft for people to make a little bit of money. You can't do it anymore. If you can buy your, S, your uh, hemostats from Therapist and you can sell your Slewas for over about 25k, you can make money. But at that point, I, I don't know that there's any reason to make them anymore because you can buy them from Therapist for... What does she sell for? 20000 I mean, I'm going to do this right now because this is what I'm going to be using a lot of these things. Uh, it might make IFAX a little bit more uh, usable, uh, but we'll see. They're not really making money either. Uh, not sure where BSG's headed with this, but can't make money on them. At level one, if you want to make money, you can make AI2s. You will make a little bit of money of this, especially if you can get your pile of meds below 10000 or at 10000 or even cheaper. You can turn around and sell these on the market uh for people that are making pile of meds which is funny how circular that is uh, and make a little bit of money so at level one there is an opportunity for you for everyone else pile of meds is your number one winner right now this is where you're going to make the most money keep an eye on augmented though this is going to start to go up more and more and more and more every couple of days you're going to see this tick up tick up tick up and then it's going to get to where therapist is the cheapest one to buy them from and she only sells two so where is that at it is right there so she sells them at twenty eight thousand, and this is going to be probably the target you're going to see 28 to 29 where augmentin is going to go and that is going to need to push pile of meds up even more expensive so make and make and make and make i make stacks of them and sell them in like stacks of 40. on top of that uh let me go back in here propitols can't make you money if you buy your components but if you use golden stars in raid when they get to one or two out of ten uses Take them out, turn them into a propital. You can buy all your components, do that, and then you make about 50, 60K on the sale of the propitals, which in turn uh, pays for about half of your new Golden Star. So that's what I do. I don't make propital to make money. I use it to make my Golden Stars cheaper. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it, but that's a strategy you can go at. Hopping over to the nutrition unit, you'll see I'm making them right now. Max energy drinks can make you money, but you need to make at the component prices, but you need to make sure you're selling them for over 15,000 uh, and don't pay an absurd amount for your tar colas, you know, stick into that 20, 25,000 range and you can make money with these uh, max energies. That's because people are using them to craft uh, mules. That's the new craft in the laboratory or in the med station that doesn't make money. But this might make you money for a couple of days. I, I see this tr crashing and coming back down and not making you money anymore. So just keep an eye on it. I'm doing it while I can make a little bit of money just so I can have something running in there. The water collector and the booze generator. Uh, water collector makes you money. Just make water and sell it. Make water and sell it. Make water and sell it. Uh, if you want to do the booze generator, I just buy my components and craft these moonshines uh and save them and i was i just got a thick case with it i got my second thick case uh for the moonshine craft you will not make money with this craft but it is a good thing to do if you don't get found in raid sugar or if you get sugars that aren't found in raid it is the best thing to do with them uh is to turn them into moonshine uh, and then run them in the scav case if you want now speaking of the scav case you get tons of questions on this 
I have been running Moonshine pretty steadily. That was to get streamer items. I just got my Kappa. Yay! Uh, so I will probably shift from Moonshines to Intels to try and get some of those higher-end keys. And that's... Intel gives you more keys. Moonshine gives you, like, streamer items. They both give you high-tier items. You know, I've gotten Vertexes and VPXs and things like that out of the Moonshine, as well as armor and guns on our SAS occasionally. So that's good. If you're looking to just make money and you don't want to spend a bunch run your 85Ks or your, you know, the 1Ks or what is the other one, 7K, those will all make you money eventually. Uh, they don't waste anything. You'll do pretty good. You'll get like, you can end up getting like black key cards and stuff out of the 85K. So you end up doing okay there. So over at the Intel Center, there is a lot of money to be made here. Right now, the top dog is graphics cards, especially if you can get your printed circuit boards cheap. These things fluctuate a lot. You can see them down in the 15K range all the way up to 28K range. So obviously, if you see them cheap, snatch them up if you're making graphics cards, and you're going to do a lot better. Second up is VPXs. Now, there's not a lot of difference here between these two in price per hour, so you can do pretty good making either one. But one thing graphics cards do is they give you a little bit more utility. And what I like to do is I'll make, you know, if I find a couple of these in raid and I'm making them, I'll throw them in my Bitcoin farm as found in raid. I'll let them sit there for a day or two or three and watch the prices of graphics cards. And when I see a spike, you know, a 50 or 60,000 rubles, like they hit 900,000 the other day, I pull all of them out and I'll sell a stack of four or five at that price and make a ton of money and then just start over again. And that way you get a little bit more utility out of the graphics cards and the VPXs, but everybody can do what they want to do to each their own. One of the big things with VPXs is RAM, though. If you can get your RAM cheap, like right now, this isn't too bad. I was seeing it into the 30s. If you're getting your RAM cheap like this, you can actually make a little bit more with the VPXs. Moving over to the laboratory, uh, you have a lot more options here than we have in the past. Let me collect this, actually, so I can show you guys. There's a couple of new crafts in here, and the, one of the new newer ones is actually a fantastic craft. This teabag craft uh, into uh, Cordura. You buy four of these off a of Ragman. It costs a little over eight thousand. You can sell your Cordura for ten, twelve, thirteen thousand, even fifteen to sixteen now. I see this crashing the Cordura price, so be cautious with this. You can make it, do it for now, but this is going to make Cordura get really cheap because this is available to a lot of people, and it is your number one craft right now. After that is Scav backpacks, and let me get to those real quick. These can make you fantastic money, especially if you're good at getting your components cheaper. Make them in stacks as much as you can fit in your inventory and then sell them at the end of the night towards the end of the night. Um, try to get over 16, maybe 16.5. I've seen them some nights even go over 20,000 for some reason. If you do that, you're going to make a ton more money with these. They're a great little craft. They're available to most everybody. And they've always kind of been dependable for me. If I don't know what to make, I know I can make money with scab backpacks. Also on top of this is the scav junk box. Make these at night if you want to. Um, you can just buy all your components, make them at night so you've got something running all night long, and you can sell them for basically break even and a little bit of profit. Now, if you have Shooter Born and Heaven done, this changes it. It actually turns into one of the best crafts in the game. Uh, you can make an absolute shitload of money with these every night or all the time. See, right now, I can buy a magazine case, and I'm going to do it right here in front of you guys, for 289000 for Mechanic. That is more than 100000 cheaper than they're going for on the market right now, which means I can make this craft for three to 350000 cheaper than everybody else and still sell it at the same price, which let me get back down to it here. Uh, and, you know, make a lot more profit. And it turns this into a fantastic craft. So if you're kind of putting off Shooter Born in Heaven I, and you're interested in making money in your hideout, I would say go go grind that thing out as fast as you can, get it done, get that unlocked, and then you've got big money waiting for you in the laboratory. Now at the workbench, this is the, obviously has the most crafts of any of the stations here, uh, and most of them make money. Uh, I don't know if it's quite half, but it's pretty close. In here... Uh, I'm just making circuit boards. Don't pay attention to what I'm crafting specifically right now. I, I've got other goals and things I'm working on, but for content creation. But right now, your number one dog is Hawk Gunpowder. And this is all dependent on when you get your blue gunpowder and your matches. This guy right here makes you the most money out of everything. It is a fantastic craft. Uh, I suggest crafting these things till you get six to 10 in a stack, unless you see prices really high for some reason on the market. And then try to sell these pushing 60,000 if you can. Now, we might see these pushing tonight uh, and getting in tomorrow because of the weekend. We might see these push a little bit higher. We'll see. It just kind of depends on what everybody's doing. But make sure you get your matches cheap. If they start pushing that 15 to 16K range, it gets a little hectic. Uh, you know, key, obviously it's great because you can take them out of raid and make money with them, but try to get them in this price. In fact, let's see if I can 
let's snag that one real quick right there. See, perfect. 8,000, 10,000, even 11,000, you're doing pretty good, but try to get them cheaper than that. And that's going to be your biggest thing. The Hawk's greatest power is how fast it crafts. It is a very quick craft. Uh, let me see, what am I at right now with my skills? So I'm at 26 minutes. Uh, so you're talking 30 to 35 minutes for a craft. So even small price changes in the components met huge profits because of how fast that craft is. Second after this is my favorite craft in uh, the workbench because of how consistent it is and how easy it is. And that is the Eagle Gunpowder Craft. Now the caveat here is you have to have... Uh, uh, Spa Tour Part 2 done so that you can buy these grenades from uh, Peacekeeper and you can buy them in stacks of 10. They cost $76 a piece. That comes out to about uh, about nine and a half, ten thousand 10,000 uh, rubles. You buy those, you buy your smoke grenades from proper, you turn those into green gunpowders, you sell your green gunpowders into the 65 range if you can. We'll see where they're at right now. If they push even higher because people are buying up green gunpowder, you are going to make bank with these. So one strategy you can do if you want to is cycle between red and greens, uh, back and forth, make those, make gunpowder, make a bunch of money. Now, if you don't have these unlocked, wires stay pretty consistently profitable. You get your you get your cords for try to get them for less than like seventeen or eighteen thousand, and then turn around and sell your wires for like ninety five hundred. You know, get stacks of like twenty or thirty of them and just put them up for sale. Right now they're getting down into the eight thousand range, but here at the ten, even twelve, some of these guys even try to push into eleven thousand. I see in the comments. If you can do that, wires are very profitable, and you can make them at level one, which is fantastic for people. Also on top of that are the gas analyzer circuit boards. This craft is very good. You want to get your gas analyzers for less than 15,000, but right here, you know, you could come in and buy all of these gas analyzers up and then go buy your red screwdrivers for about less than 7,000 and then just sit on your circuit boards till they get into those high 20s. Dump them all right then. People are buying them up for their graphics cards. You're going to make pretty good money with those. And like I said, there's a lot of other crafts in here that are worth making money. And if you get out of raid with stuff that isn't found in raid and you're looking for something to do with it, things like a lion, right? A non-found in raid lion isn't worth a whole bunch. Here, you might be able to make a bunch of money crafting it into an OFZ shell and selling it for 130, 140,000. It just all depends on what you get your components for. Okay, so before we wind this down, I have a couple of points I want to talk. I don't want to do this at the front of the video because I don't want to waste people's time. I'll do it at the back end for those of you that are interested in it. Um... When it comes to stacking crafted materials, for example, if you craft green gunpowder and you craft blue gunpowder and then you use those to craft BP, that does not maximize your profits. I'm not saying don't do it. If you want to do that because that's how you want to spend your money, by all means. But if you're looking to make the most money as possible, stick with one craft. Stick with the top craft you can craft and just craft that over and over and over again and sell all the components. If you want to make BP ammo because you want BP ammo to use, then craft BP ammo. Just buy the components and craft it. Buy them, watch the market, buy your green gunpowder and your blue gunpowder for the little cheap dips that it does, and then craft your BP to use. That's fine. If you're looking to make money, though, and if you're looking to maximize how much money you're getting out of your hideout, don't stack crafts. Now, this doesn't apply to cross modules. For example, if you are crafting something in the med station and then using it in the... Uh, uh, let's say go the other direction. If you're crafting something in the laboratory and use it in the med station, that is okay because you're not, it's not, it's the time component. You're not eating up the time. So like, for example, you can make a little bit of money with moonshine. If you take your, your purified water and you turn it into moonshine, it gets super complicated. I don't recommend doing that, but it does work that way. If you cross modules. Second on this is if you really, really want to maximize how well you're doing in your hideout, Reduce the thought process in it. If you see components cheap, snatch up as many of them as you can. It is definitely worth getting an extra scav case and putting nothing but components to craft in it if you can get those components at a cheap price. So like we were talking red gunpowders, making those. buy bun Every time you see matches cheap, buy them. What I actually do, and I'll show you guys here, I haven't done it yet because I've been worrying about some other stuff, but create a wish list full of components that you guys want that you know you're going to be constantly buying, and then you can just quickly flip through them in between raids, and if you see components below, you know, okay, you know matches, you want to buy them below 10,000, or blue gunpowders below, say, 14,000. Buy Whenever you see those, just buy them, and then throw all the non-found and raid ones in one scav box and all your loot in another scav box, and that will help you make more money in the hideout than most anybody else will be able to do. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys. 
Well, that wraps up the video. I hope you guys liked it. If so, make sure you hit that like button. It helps out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe so you see when new content shows up. I stream on Twitch most weeknights, so come by and say hi there if you want to. And we have a Discord full of chilled, laid-back people who love to help out and answer questions, as well as brag about some of our awesome loot. So the link for that's down in the description too, so you can join there if you want to. Lastly, as always, thank you guys for watching the video. Your support is amazing and helps out in more ways than you guys can imagine. So with that, we'll wrap it up, and we'll see you in Tarkov.